Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I have a delicious sweet recipe for you. It's vegan, it's gluten-free, and we are making a twist on traditional French creme brulee. And we're adding some pumpkin because Halloween is coming, Thanksgiving is coming, and this can be a total beautiful treat at your holiday table. The first thing we need to do is preheat our oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 160 Celsius. And we're gonna fill a kettle with water and bring it up to a boil. Now the process is really easy because we're gonna add all of our ingredients into our blender. The first ingredient is of course our pumpkin. So this is just half a can of pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, so we only want the pumpkin here. And if you're making it from pumpkin yourself, I recommend roasting the pumpkin instead of boiling it. And you'll need about three quarters of a cup. It's about half a can. We're gonna add that to our blender. And the second most important ingredient is full fat coconut milk from a can. It's very important that before you open it, you give it a really kind of vigorous shake. It's a dessert, so we need some sugar. We're also going to be adding some cornstarch. This is gonna help uh, create the firmness that we want in that creme brulee. And you know me, even in the sweetest recipes, salt has to be added to make the flavors come through and pop. Now, one of the key ingredients in any type of creme brulee you're making is some vanilla. And I always recommend whenever you can, find the whole vanilla bean or pod. And we're gonna scrape out the seeds and also add the bean itself in with our mixture when we're heating it up in the pot. So here you have to just very carefully with a knife, just try to open it lengthwise. And you're gonna see all of that. Oh my gosh, the smell, it's amazing. So fresh, so incredible. And now we can easily, once it's open, just scrape out the seeds. So all of that, we're gonna add in here. Do not throw this out. We're gonna use it in a second. There is so much flavor and aroma in there. So let's cover our blender and we're gonna blend this until it's really, really creamy. Let's add this to a pot. And of course, we're adding our vanilla just to infuse it with even more flavor. Look at that gorgeous color. It's amazing, that's why I love it for Halloween or Thanksgiving, we're theming this up. So now we're just going to let this um, kind of warm through on high heat, and then we lower to medium heat, and we're gonna let this just get infused with that vanilla for about 10 minutes. You will see that it's warm through because it's gonna start to bubble a little bit, and of course you can also carefully just see if it's okay temperature wise, just warm is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and taste this. Oh, that's so good. So now that it's warm, I'm just gonna lower the heat a little bit to medium, and I'm going to continuously stir for those 10 minutes. Just make sure you keep an eye on it because it can scorch the bottom if you're not careful. And we're just gonna let it get infused and also activate that cornstarch that will make it thicker. Look at how velvety and rich this has become. The smell is amazing. The vanilla is, has really infused into this cream and you've got a different texture and a bit of a change in color too. Now, very important before we continue is that you find those vanilla pods in there and take them out. Now to bake our creme brulees, we're going to need an oven proof pan that will fit all of the ramekins we're gonna use. So these are just oven proof ramekins and there are so many different sizes and styles. The traditional creme brulee ramekin is this round flat one, but you can also make them in smaller and taller ramekins. The reason for the pan is this is gonna hold our water. We're gonna be cooking these in a water bath. So now let's fill these up with our pumpkin creme brulee cream 
and we're gonna pop them in the oven. You always wanna leave a little bit of space at the top and we want to smoothen this as much as possible so that when we add our sugar on top and we use our torch to torch these, it comes out in an even layer. Now the important thing for all of them to cook at the same time is that even if you have a smaller but taller ramekin, you're adding roughly the same amount of that custard inside and they'll roughly be ready at the same time. And this will be enough for about four or five creme brulees depending on their sizes. Now let's add our water carefully. You want to add it to about half of your smallest ramekin. Now we pop these in the oven for 30 minutes. Once your creme brulees are out of the oven, you're gonna see that there is a lot more firmness to them and they just look beautiful, but they're not ready. They need to set and chill in the refrigerator for three to four hours. So this is really a simple recipe, but it does require a little bit of planning ahead of time so that you have enough time to chill these and let these set. Now these have already been baked and chilled and now I get to teach you my favorite part for which you'll need a small kitchen torch to add that beautiful crackly sugar topping that is so typical in creme brulee. So there's really no need to measure the sugar you add on top. I just place it in a little container where I can easily grab it with my fingers and just add it on top. Now really, really carefully, we're just gonna turn on our torch and we're just going to show it carefully to our sugar. You're gonna see that it starts to melt and what we do want to create is a kind of effect where some parts are a little bit darker than others. So for that, you just add a bit more sugar or you just stay in that area for a little bit longer. Now, if you test it with a spoon right away, you're gonna feel that you really didn't do much at all. It's because the sugar needs to recrystallize again. So just leave, leave it a couple minutes and you'll see that that happened. But I definitely want another layer in this first one I did because I wanna see more of that color. And this is kinda of how you do it. You just eyeball it and play around until you get that gorgeous top. Now always check to see if the process happened correctly about two minutes after you torched and do not break it. Do not break it, that is blasphemous. Your diner is the one that gets to break it. But just give it a light tap and that I can hear that it's perfectly solid and crystallized. I always love to add a little more presentation. So I add a couple of beautiful raspberries. They also go really great with the flavor combination and some mint leaves or spearmint leaves just to add that little pop of color. Now, if you want to theme these and make these for Halloween, for example, you could buy those sugar pumpkins or little ghosts or spiders and just pop one on top. And same thing for uh, Thanksgiving if you want to add a little bit more of a theme there. Now, it's very important to remember that the torching of your creme brulees has to happen right before serving. Otherwise, if you put these in your fridge, that sugar will melt back up and you won't get that crackle. I think few desserts have this much anticipation. Let's see if the microphone catches that perfect sound. Mmm. That's too good. You get that creaminess, that velvety texture, so much of that vanilla, and of course, that sugary coating. 